Hey there folks, Luke here with the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you're all doing well. Today for this episode, it is Military Surplus Wednesday and we're taking a look at a product from Germany and this is the Flectarn Combat Rucksack. Go ahead and get comfortable, let's get started, let's take a look at it. Now to start off, we'll do a 360, take the pack off, take a look at the features. Now what do you guys think about that camo pattern? Can you see the pack? Where is it at? It really does a good job of blending in, don't it? So here's the Flectarn Combat Pack. We'll just go ahead and start here at the top. And right back here on the lid, you have a small piece of Velcro for patches and so on. Right below that, you have a zipper, which gives you access to the entire lid portion of this pack. And this is a very good size pocket too. I mean, as you can see there, my entire arm fits all the way in there. So it will definitely hold a lot of gear. Flip that around so you can see that. That's a lot of space. You also have two loops right here so you can attach additional gear if you need to. Across the top of the lid here, you have plenty of strapping so you can attach your bedroll, your sleeping pad, whatever you want to. You have that on both sides as well. And as, as I said there, I mean, you have a lot of strapping so you can really hunker down a large load if you need to. In the center here, you have a pouch. It does not have a buckle on it, so it only opens to as long as your strap is. Now, in the future, I plan on replacing these. I don't like this. I want to be able to open this lid all the way out, and I don't want to have this piece of material here blocking what I'm going to pull out of this pocket. Anyways, you do have this pocket, this pouch right here. It's very good size. I mean, you could put a lot of gear inside of that. I kind of like the orientation of this pocket because it's sideways. That's interesting. Going down from the pouch, you have a Velcro pocket right here. Maybe you could put in your map or something like that. Not too shabby. We'll go ahead and rotate the lid back. There are no more pockets on the inside here. So as you can see here, this is an expandable pack. And we'll go to the inside of this in just a minute. But you do have a drawstring here at the very top. You have a drawstring right here in the middle. Going down. You have this loop right here. You also have another loop right down here. And then a small little pocket down at the very bottom. And this is a weapons compatible bag, so you can carry your rifle right through these loops all the way down through here. You can rig it up so this, that your pack carries that rifle right on the front. I've heard of people carrying their AK-47s and their SKSs on this, and I'm sure it will hold a wide range of different rifles. You just have to work with it, get it to fit, get it to work. Going to the side of the pack, you have another pouch. And one thing I do like about these pouches is that there's a separation between the material and the pack itself. So if you had an axe or something like that, you could slide it down behind the pocket and then out of the bottom like so. But yes, you have this pouch here. And again, it doesn't have a buckle. It just has this attachment right here. So you cannot open the lid fully, which really hinders your ability to get out what you need to from the pocket. You can pull everything to the side but still it's not very simple, very easy. I'm going to replace these with actual buckles. But as you can see there, that's a very good size pocket, a lot of space. You have another one of those pockets, those pouches on the other side. And again, you can slide something down behind that pocket. Going down, you have two compression straps that separate the sleeping bag compartment from the rest of the pack. You have some additional strapping down here at the bottom, not a great deal, but you do have some. So you could probably rig up something you could definitely carry a small item down on the bottom with this strapping. We'll go ahead and open up the sleeping bag compartment for you. And it would fit a small size sleeping bag. Definitely not a full size winter bag, I don't, I don't believe anyway. Right now I just have a fleece blanket in there and that takes up a good bit of the pocket. I think for your early winter needs, it will definitely support your sleeping bag. I think for really cold climates, I'm not sure that it would hold a full size winter bag. So as you can see here, this is the inside of the sleeping bag compartment. You do have a two-way zipper. You do have a small little ruffle that goes over the zipper to, to protect it. You have a separation from the sleeping bag compartment from the rest of the sack with a drawstring right here. And that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and take a look at the very bottom of the pack here. You can see that you have some additional loops. So you can attach other gear if you need to. Now we'll take a look at the back side and the harness. 
This pack has all of the typical features. You have a drag handle right here, load lifters on the shoulder harness. The harness itself is mediumly padded. It's definitely not the thickest padding out there. This is not a pack that I would use to carry extremely heavy loads for that purpose. This is a frameless pack as well. So extremely heavy loads. I think this pack is gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. For your average overnight trip, I think it's gonna be fine for a scouting mission. Um, you know, a quick bug out bag, I think it'll be all right. You do have a sternum strap that is adjustable. Below that, you have the typical harness adjustments. Now below the harness, as you can see here, you do have a waist belt, simple buckle, very minimalistic, um, more about support, little to do with comfort. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the pack. We'll start right here up at the top. Like I said before, draw a string. Down from the top, another draw a string. So you can sense down your load. Ah, what is this? I wonder if the wife notices that one of her pillows are missing. I wonder if she notices that two of them are. <laughs> now before we go to the internals of this pack, right here on the lid, it says uh, David Mueller. So uh, David Mueller, if you happen to watch this video, I have your pack, my friend. I have your entire address. You know, I should probably send you a letter in the mail and I might actually do that. How cool would that be to figure out, find out where this pack's been, what type of service it's seen. But on the inside of the lid here, you can see the NSN number. And here in a little bit, we'll go over what all this means. Below that, you can see this bar. And like I said before, this pack is frameless. It has this one bar right here. And I'm not entirely sure what this is for, to be honest. It doesn't really add anything to the lid or to the pack itself. So yeah, I don't know. If you guys know, drop me a line, put it down in the comment section below for us. Below that bar, you do have a pocket right here. You can rig up a hydration bladder to ride inside of this, but this pocket right here was meant for the German folding uh, sleeping mat. And you can put that inside of this and it would actually make a sort of makeshift frame sheet for this pack, give it some rigidity. And in the future, I will show that off to you. But it's a good size pocket. You could definitely take a frame sheet out of say, other military packs and it works just fine. But it goes all the way to the bottom of the pack there. It's a very good size pocket. Going down from that sleeve, basically you have no more pockets. All you have is just the large rucksack. The material on the inside is very rubbery, as you can see there, very good quality. So as you guys can see right here, this does have a NATO stock number, NSN number. Some people call it a national stock number as well. But this is a number that is recognized by all NATO countries. So. I can break this down for you and tell you what each one of these numbers mean. The 8465 signifies that it is an individual piece of equipment, okay? The 12 signifies that it's from Germany. 328 is the item number, and the 1692 identifies this as a field pack. So with this German combat pack, it's pretty cool. It's got some pretty cool features to it. I like the camo pattern. The flectarn's pretty neat. It definitely blends in with this temperate climate of ours, of mine anyway perfect for mountains very similar to like a woodland camo now if you go out looking for this pack you could find it in the flectarn camo you can also find it in a snow camo pattern that looks pretty cool as well i like it in the future i may get one of those in the pack is made from nylon what grade of nylon i do not know i haven't been able to find that information it is sort of rubberized on the inside and you could tell just from looking at this pack that this thing is bomb proof it is made to take abuse it is incredibly good quality now, when it comes to size, you're looking at roughly 65 liters worth of space. One thing that I really like about this pack is the size and the shape of it. It's long. It's not very wide, so it really fits close to your back. It's comfortable. With a good frame sheet inside of this, it becomes even more comfortable. I look at this as a three-day pack. I wouldn't go any longer than that because you would start carrying some heavy gear. And with it being frameless, man, you're going to feel it. Even if you insert some sort of back sheet, you're still going to feel it. The padding here is fairly thin, but suitable for about three days worth of gear. I like the pockets on the sides. I like the pocket on the top. I highly hate these little buckle things right here. I don't like that at all, and I will be removing that in the future. I will sew on some buckles, and if you guys want to see me do that, I could make a video of me going through that process. I could even tell you guys where I got the buckles at. Just let me know if you're interested in that sort of thing. When it comes to price, you could pick these up online for roughly 60 bucks. I mean, sometimes you can find them for 40 on eBay. Sometimes you'll find them on military surplus sites for, the average is $60. 
I think for 60 bucks, man, you are talking about one heck of a strong pack. Very versatile. Man, if you're a hunter, this right here can definitely serve your purposes. If you're into bushcraft, there's a lot of things to like as well. The last thing that we will touch upon here is weight. And then we'll finish up this video. This runs about five pounds empty, and that's typical for a military pack. Frameless military pack, very good quality, like I said before. So my friends, for our look at the German Flecktarn combat pack, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions for me, please feel free, drop me a line, let me know. I will see you guys around. Strength and honor.